Welcome back. We're back on the 2001 Yamaha. Well, uh, what is this thing? A Vino. Ah, Vino. I almost forgot. All right, guys. We got some parts in. We have a carburetor rebuild kit that we have been waiting on. And if you need one, there is the part number. All right. Took that thing a while to come in, man. The guy was show on, slow on shipping it. And all we got us a seat cover. Go ahead and try to fix our busted seat here. But we're gonna do the carburetor first. Now in part one, we put a new ignition on, trunk lock gas tank, well gas cap. We got a new battery. And we heard this sucker run. So I get what we're gonna start today is we're gonna go ahead and uh pull the carburetor off and um put that rebuild kit in there. Probably throw it over an ultrasonic cleaner, get it all cleaned up. But guys, I look for exhaust pipes. And um, I couldn't find none cheap. Used as these things like 170, 150 bucks, something like that. So I decided to, let's try to clean all the oil out of it. Well, here's all the oil that came out of it. It is a lot. And I mean a lot. Check that out. And that's sitting in this little wheel center cap, but that thing is that's a lot of oil that came out of there, guys. So what I did was I drilled a hole right there of where that screw is at. And um I just let this thing hang from the back of the bike and drain into this bucket. Alright, so and that's what came out. And I took some degreaser, which is over here, a little purple power, and uh, I just kind of flushed it out a couple times, and I ended up with this. I hope you guys can see it, but that oil slick on top of the degreaser, yeah, pulled out a lot of grease. And then I had the bright idea of, let me fill this thing up. So, if you look down in here, when you look here. I plugged the exhaust on that side and I plugged that hole that I drilled on the bottom with a screw. And I filled this sucker up with the greaser. Now I did that a week ago. I was only gonna let it soak overnight, but got busy at work and I forgot about it. So it's been sitting here for a week full of the greaser. So I hope that doesn't harm it. I mean, at this point, I don't think we had nothing to lose, so. Let's go ahead and just try to drain this sucker out, y'all. Put you guys down. I'm gonna need two hands. I'll be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and just get this thing drained out. Oh man, that's nasty. It's brown. Okay, I think I'm about to take the plug out because there's still more in there. All right, let me grab a, I don't want to set it in there. Just hang it right where it was for a second. I think I need to grab an eight millimeter and my impact, wherever that may be. All right, here we go. Okay, let's take out the plug that I put on the bottom and see how much more comes out. It's like chambers in here or something. I don't know how this thing works. If I ever do buy the uh, aftermarket one, I'm probably going to cut this open. I'm curious. All right, guys. All right. She always wants to start peeing. All right, there we go. Well, that's not purple anymore. <laughs> that's more of a root beer looking color now. I don't know if you guys can see the sludge at the bottom of the, to the side, that gray stuff to the right. Yeah. All right, guys, we're just gonna let this thing sit here and drain for a second. While we get started on the carburetor. Guys, on. Oh, trap up. 
not giving anybody vertigo. All right, going ahead and pull this carburetor. That's my first time ever touching the Yamaha carburetor, guys. I really, I wouldn't say don't know what I'm doing, just not familiar. All right, this thing looks, okay. Looks like this thing has an electric choke. Yep, it's choke. I got uh, two screws over here to take off the throttle cables. It's dual throttle cable. I didn't notice that. Okay, so it's like the uh, the um, Yamaha or the other Yamaha. The uh, what you call that orange thing? The Zuma. <laughs> okay. Okay. Looks like we have vacuum line and the fuel line here. And what is holding it on? Okay, it's just a um, 10 millimeter of Phillips for this screw, bolt, nut, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you do call it. To take it from the intake. I do see a little crack in his intake, so I'm going to expect that a little bit better when I get it off. Okay, guys, so let me go ahead and pull this sucker off and I'm going to pull it apart and throw it in the cleaner. All right, got the carburetor off. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up like i said it wasn't too hard to take off you just had two phillips screwdrivers here holding that uh the throttle cables which was a dual throttle cable on both sides there a fuel line there's a vacuum line here wasn't nothing on here so i'm probably going to plug that and don't look like anything was ever on there either and uh this is the oil injection line here so since we're going to be pre-mixing our fuel we're just probably going to cap that off too. And here we have our automatic choke. So, like a GY6, sort of, kind of. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing apart real quick. Let's take the electric choke off. Yeah, it's a little dirty in there. A little dirty. All right, those parts there. And we're just gonna pop the bowl off. Now I probably should have drained this sucker. All right, let me just go ahead and pull this screw out here and drain this bowl so we don't mess up our nice little table here. Okay, I just drained the bowl, so let's go ahead and just pull that off real quick and let's look inside. Doesn't seem to be too much on the outside of this carburetor I'm gonna take off before we just throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Got it set up right there for you. you can see the old sun fin right there. So when I'm thinking about that. I might need to go ahead and turn it on and get it to warming up. All right, let's get this bowl off real quick. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Ew. Check that out. That is nasty. And I'm surprised it ran with all that crap in it. I'm surprised the jets wasn't clogged up with all that crap in it. That is disgusting, man. All right. We have our main jet and our pilot jet here. You guys can see that. And our float. And under here, I guess, take this screw out. We're going to get our float plunger. I'm going to take all of this out. All the jets, everything. Let's pull this. And this is plastic. And it feels very weak and not brittle. But I feel like this sucker might be easy to break. Okay. All right. We have our float and our float plunger there. Now our kit came, I think it came with a new plunger. Yeah, there's a plunger in there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but we have a plunger in there, so. All right. Now we find a flathead and we're gonna go ahead and pull out the jets. Pull our pilot jet first. And our main jet. Let's 
Now, I'm thinking I might have to go ahead and take the top off because I think there's a, uh, the needle is in there. So I'm just going to pull this piece off because it looks like I have a gasket that matches that shape. Yeah, so let's go ahead and pull uh, the throttle needle out. And when we throw everything in here, she's going to get a good old, good old bath. off real quick screws now be careful because I've never taken one apart might have a spring in it and here we go here's our needle doesn't look bad now, I don't think this thing has that many miles and I'm gonna look at it but I think all of the damage on this 2001 Yamaha because I think in the previous videos I said it was a uh, 2000 yeah I was wrong about that I don't think it had too many miles on it I gotta look at it again all right there's a little dirt and grime down inside of it so it's definitely going to need to be cleaned so let's see we have a pilot jet and a main jet in this kit, so we're not even gonna worry about throwing those in the ultrasonic. So let's just get everything in the bucket here and get it in the cleaner. Now I'm gonna be doing this ultrasonic cleaning a little bit different this time. Uh remember when I first got this thing, I watched a couple videos of a guy who uh was showing how he did it, and basically he took Tupperware and uh, peanut butter jars and fill them up whatever cleaning solution you want to use pine saw gasoline whatever and he just kind of just dropped everything in there that way when you put this in this you don't dirty up your um all your solution or your water well i didn't think about this method until i had already filled it up with the greaser so you can see it's full of purple power but man, neither here nor there on that right now so we're going to try it we're just going to go drop all our parts in here i don't know if i can get them all in there let's see can we get this throttle body the body of the car in there okay everything fits and we're just going to go ahead and seal that on up now this is just supposed to be able to keep all your fluids clean I mean uh your fluid in there clean and this is only fluid that gets dirty so in theory saving you money so you're only using up a little cleaner instead of that whole 10 uh, 10 L whatever the hell 10 liters of uh, fluid getting uh, dirty so I'm just going to go ahead and throw everything in here even the old jets and let's just ultrasonic clean all the parts. Even well, I ain't gonna throw the float in there because it's gonna float. <laughs> okay. All right, top on that. Let me make sure this sucker is on. Yeah, buddy. Let's turn that temp up. Or, well, actual temp right now is. Let's see. Actual temp on this thing is 25 Celsius. I'm setting it pretty high. So we'll run our time to 15 minutes. Let's go to 18. All right, we're gonna let this thing sit here and. Um, warm up is on now and when it warms up we'll be back and we'll throw all of this in here and we'll see how it does all right be right back okay this sucker is up to temp let's go ahead and get it started i'm gonna go ahead and cut back out when it starts because you know it did screws with the camera bad so let's go ahead and go 
All right, the ultrasonic cleaner has just beeped off, guys. This sucker is hot now. They only got it to about uh, 55 degrees Celsius. I had it set at 70, but I think that's plenty warm. All right, guys, you can see my degrease on the outside of the bowl. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, it is still um, still nice and clear. So let's pull out the Tupperware. You can see it's all bubbled up from the heat. Oh man, look at that, you can tell. I think it did work. That the grease on the inside of the bowl is dirty. So all right, let's uh, pop this bad boy open and see how it did. All right. Okay, oh shoot, that is hot, man. Whew. The water's not hot, but the metal is cooking. All right, let's try to find all our parts. There's the bowl. Now the bowl was dirty as the dickens, man, but okay, it's a whole lot better. Not perfect, but it's it's cleaner than when she went in. Let's see. Whew. All right. Okay, let's sit that down. All right, guys, I don't know the name of this piece, but uh. I know it has the needle in it and whatever that thing is there. As I don't know the name of everything I work on, I just I can kind of figure out how to put them together. So okay, well, that's a little cleaner. Not perfect, but we're not going for perfect. It's not a show bike. All right, I think nothing else in there but screws. So let me fish those screws out and we're going to start to assemble this thing. And I'm going to wipe everything down with some PB blaster and we'll start the assembly process. Okay, and got everything fished out of the bowl. Now our jets are looking, our old stock jets are looking uh, pretty clean on the outside. Main jet is clear. Okay, I can see daylight through it. Now, pilot jet, eh, came out a little cleaner. Now, I do, I am noticing something. These parts don't come out as bright as it does if I would have used um, pine saw, like I did on the other carburetor in another video. But um, they're clean. But I'm thinking, yeah, pine saw might be the way to go. I was just trying to do something a little different using the um, purple power, but. Okay, the pilot jet is good. We didn't know they wasn't clogged before. Okay, and a little plate for to hold down our electric choke came out pretty good. It's clean. All our screws and everything came out pretty clean. So we're doing pretty good on that end. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start assembling this thing. First, I'm gonna go ahead and just try to fish this gasket, this old gasket, out of here. We had a new one right here, so. Let's try to get this out and start the assembly. Okay, gang, I just realized I still had the camera in time lapse, and uh, you probably seen me showing you the carbon and all this and that, but you couldn't hear me and it was moving real fast. But what I was saying, I got the carb all back together. She's all back together, all new seals. So I put all the new seals in. I did not use the old hardware, it came with new hardware. And I did not put in the new uh, needle with the spring and the clamps and stuff because um, 
I didn't see the need. This bike has 9,000 miles on it. 9,000 miles. But everything looked good on it, so I didn't see the need of putting all that in there. But I got all new hardware, all new screws. You can see ones on top, bottom. Everything came out pretty good, so we're going to go ahead and uh, slap the battery back in this bad boy. And uh, I'm gonna give her a shot of starting fluid just to get it going and uh, we'll see if this puppy will run. Oh yeah, but before I do that, we're gonna put this exhaust on because if this thing is leaking like it was in the last video, I don't wanna ignite the whole daggone shed on fire. So let's look at the uh, exhaust real quick. Let's see. Man, it, it, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like a gang of flies in here, man. They're gonna be disappointed when I close these doors and go and get out of here for the day and they'll be in this little well, tripod there. Okay. All right, but look at that. Now I have let this uh, exhaust hang here off the back of the scooter. Just got it hanging so it can kind of get all the rest of the moisture out. But look at what drained out. That is disgusting. Right, yeah, we're gonna put this exhaust back on man cuz like I say if it's leaking I don't want to start a fire I gotta get that out. I am just knocking stuff down all in here All right, let me see let's get this cap out real quick This is one of those uh, little twist nuts where y'all at? This is one of those little twist nuts man for electrical So I don't know. I think this is about to be a fight. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get this out, bolt the exhaust back on. I'm gonna kick this bad boy over and see will it run, okay? And see how well it runs now. I know it's still going to smoke because I do believe all that oil, like, like we pulled out of the exhaust, and that is still dripping out of this sucker. I think the case inside has a lot of oil that has drained down in the case, so it's probably still going to smoke like a banshee for at least until we run all of that out so all right guys let me go ahead and get this thing back together and i'll be right back with you and i'll show you what i did all right guys let me turn the fan off real quick so you can hear me better all right i got the battery back on i got the exhaust back on i went ahead and put the uh eight millimeter bolt that i had stuck in the hole i drew stuck it back on and i gotta put the fuel line on real quick and I want to show you guys, look at that, it's a little filter. Focus. Anyway, there's a little filter inside of the line, of the uh, the fuel line. I've never seen that before in my life. That's neat. Alrighty. Here's my needle noses. Let's go ahead and get that on. That clip down there. Right, I'm gonna pull back off the vacuum line and um, I'm gonna use my mouse like a later to prime the bowl on the carb so we don't be sitting here killing that little battery I just got back hooked up. And I hooked it up the right way this time so I didn't blow a fuse. So hold on. The bowl should be filled now so, so battery looks to be still be good. Let me uh, sit you guys somewhere you can watch and Let's see if this bad boy gonna fire up. I think that's good. How you guys looking right to the car? If it'll stay there. If it'll stay okay, well let's do something different. Alright. There you go, you can look at the motor that way. So let's try it out. She's running, and she's a smoking. We knew that was going to happen, though. Let it sit there and put for a minute. Probably going to, to adjust that idle a little bit. I'm gonna wait till it warm up before I mess with it. Oh yeah, she is. She's put, put, put. But the car is not leaking. So I'll give it a little gas, see what happens. Alrighty. 
it is still spitting out oil to be expected looks like a oil and degreaser mix but the smoke is not as thick as it was so yeah, let's shut this bad boy off guys all right i'm gonna step out of here for a second and air the sucker out man because I don't know if you can tell by the camera, but she foggy again. You can see the smoke and the light. So uh, I'm thinking the next thing to do is to get this bad boy off the stand. Well, first pump up the tire. How's that tire doing? That was good. See, can I pump this tire up? This, uh, I'm gonna throw the battery back here in its tray and uh bolt it back to where it came from which i don't remember i might have to go look back at the first video get the battery back in its tray put the seat on i don't know nothing else but to run this suck up and down the street and see how it rides you know all right so let me get all that together and i'll be back with you okay guys i fired it back up and uh i'm just gonna let it sit here and run for a little bit let it come up to temp before I get to ripping it up down the street. Kind of want to listen at it. Now I've been sitting here running for like three minutes and the smoke is considerably less. There's no clouds in here, but let's see what it does when we get to, when we get on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it still turns into a uh, smoke sack. I mean, can you roll coal on a scooter? I guess that's kind of like what it is, right? And I'm going to kind of tighten this panel back up here off the ground before we take off. I still got to find that cap. I think it's in the yard. Right, I'm going to zip tie those up real quick. And I'm just going to let it sit here and run for a few minutes before we hit the street. And I still got to pump that tire up. Okay, I'll see you guys on the street. Okay, gang, we up in the alley and we're gonna run this suck up the road and uh, see how it's doing. Let's go ahead and get it crunk up. Alrighty. So let's make a run to the top of the hill. I know what's wrong with it. I forgot to put the air box back on. Now let's get to the top of the hill and we'll turn around. I'm wide open throttle, man. All right, let's shoot back and get that uh, air box, man. Put that on and see how it does. Okay, gang, I got the air box back on, and this thing is way quieter. So let's try to run up the hill again and see if it's any better. Let's go. Much better. It's not bogging at all now. Uh, 20 miles per hour. 25. 30 All right, ran out of road, ran out of road. All right, that's not bad and the smoking is not as bad either. It's calmed down quite a bit. So it's going up to the other side of the hill. Now this is uphill. Twenty-five. Thirty. Uh, can we get thirty-five? Ah, uh, about thirty-two miles.
right guys we've run out of road again but about 32 miles per hour uphill so we're gonna go downhill and then we're gonna try some flat land out here right now all right guys we're gonna go try some flat ground and see what we can get this thing up to it it was about 37 miles per hour downhill which we know that's really not a test but we're gonna take it to flat ground real quick and see what it does Guy, we're gonna do our flat ground test. This street here is pretty flat. It has a little hill at the end. All right, let's go. A little slug is getting to 20. Oh, Yamaha kicked in. We're at 30. Thirty-three. We're on the hill now. All right, about thirty-three miles per hour is on on the flat ground test. Let's run it back the other way. Alright guys, that's why I think this sucker tops out at is about 33 miles per hour. Let's head on back to the house. Alright guys, this thing ran pretty good once I put the air box back on. Yeah, it's bogging out without the uh, air filter box housing on there. Uh, going to have to probably take that apart, clean it and re-oil it. Now, I did see online there is a restrictor washer on the variator but the people say i can take off and get a little bit more hp out of it so we'll do that but yeah i mean she's still leaving smoke clouds oh yeah not as bad as it was when it was in the shed but you can check it out now, she leaves pretty good trails running down the um down the road and I passed the cop too. In Nevada, you gotta have these things uh, tagged and registered and all that. But yeah, as you see, I ain't got no tag, no tail lights back there. But he kind of just gave me a look and kept going. So that was good. Check, sure, guys, this little thing here, man. Uh, I already, I already knew once I bought, it, I probably was going to end up keeping it. But yeah, I think I'm keeping this one, man. It'd be the only two-stroke that I have, something to play with. See what I can get all get out of this engine, you know. I want a big board kit and do a whole bunch of things to it. But um, all right, guys. When we come back on the next video, part three, we're going to do the seat covering and uh, start working on the body work. Now, I'll pull that restrictor plate off, or the restrictor washer off, if there's one in there, and see how much you know. How many more miles per hour we can get out of it? Now, we did top out at about 32 miles an hour. You can see the oil light is on because I got the oil tank is empty because I got my fuel mixed. So, might just unplug that. But check, yeah, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, on the next one, we're going to start to dress this bad boy up. Man, just listen. It's just, this thing is quiet. Alright guys, I'll see you on the next video.
please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.